Good morning and greetings to all our students who are taking their online classes. This mini lecture is part of a series of mini lectures designed to supplement the available learning materials online. But specifically, we are trying to use the Ignatian pedagogical paradigm, which is a framework of teaching in Jesuit schools. In essence, Ignatian pedagogical paradigm is an interplay of experience, reflection, and action within the context of the learner, and then eventually evaluation of what the learner has learned. So I have here some manipulatives that we can use in the experience part of our lesson, and then I will guide you through the reflection process so that you can own whatever observations you get from this experience part and eventually transform them from your short-term memory to long-term memory through actions. So what do we want to achieve in this lesson? This lesson is designed for elementary students who are just starting to learn fractions. So our goal is first, we, we want to know what fraction is. And then second, we want to know what are the different kinds of fractions. And third, we'll perform some basic operations. So let's begin. Let's say I have this red bar and we assume that this is the one hole. If I want to cut this red bar into two equal parts, this is what will happen. We have the one hole, this is the one half, and this is another half. So we cut the one hole into two equal parts. Together, they will form one hole. If I want to cut the same length of bar into three equal parts, then this is what will happen. Each one of this orange bar is one third. This is one out of three parts. And those three parts are these three orange bars. It is one out of the three, two out of the three, three out of the three. So another way of calling these two parts, let's put them together. This is one third and one third together. This is called two thirds. And then if we put them together, one third, another one third, another one third, together, this is three thirds or three out of three or one whole. So let's define what fraction is. A fraction is a number that represents one or more equal parts of a whole. And it is written in the form numerator over the denominator. So in our fraction here, one is the numerator, two is the denominator. In our fraction here, one is the numerator, three is the denominator. So there's one thing that I would like you to notice. Let's say we have this one whole, and I take the one half. And then I put the one thirds, and I put the one fourth, and I put the one fifth, one sixth, and so on. Is there any pattern that you notice now? Look at these bars. This one hole, we cut into half, that's one half. Cut into thirds, one third, and so on. One third, one fourth, one fifth, one sixth, one seven, one eighth, one eighth. So at this point, I would like you now to observe. Is there any pattern that you notice? If you notice any pattern, write that in your reflection notebook. Okay, I assume that you already have written something in your reflection notebook. So one thing that we can notice here now is given that the numerators are the same, they are all one, and the denominators are different numbers, the smaller the number is 
in the denominator. So the denominator here is 2, the denominator is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and so on. The smaller is the number in the denominator, the longer is the length of the fraction bar. So in other words, one half is greater than one third, and one third is greater than one fourth, one fourth is greater than one fifth. That's the first thing that I would like you to write in your reflection. Next, when you look at fractions in the same bar, you notice that they have the same denominators. So all these fractions in the same bar, they have all the same denominators. This kind of fractions that have the same denominators, one third, two thirds, three thirds, one fourth, two over four, and so on, they are what we call as similar fractions. So similar fractions are those fractions that have the same denominators. So those fractions that have the same denominators are what we call as similar fractions. So example of similar fractions would be 1 half and 2 over 2. Let's write them down. So another example would be, let's say, we have this. We have this 1 over 3 and this 2 over 3. So fractions are similar when the denominators are the same. If I cross between bars, let's say I have 1 third and I have this other bar, 1 eighth, when the denominators are different, we now call them as dissimilar fractions. So example of dissimilar fractions could be 1 third and 1 sixth, 1 fourth and 1 over 10. So once the denominators are different, they're considered as dissimilar fractions. So at this point, let's pause for a while and I would like you to jot down in your reflection notebook the answer to the question. What is the difference between similar and dissimilar fractions. Okay, I assume that you have written already in your reflection notebook your answer to the question, what is the difference between similar and dissimilar fractions? So to review our answer to that question, we say that fractions are similar when the denominators are the same. And fractions are dissimilar when the denominators are different. And these are some of the examples. Why are we talking about this classification of similar and dissimilar fractions? The answer is because depending on what kind of fractions you have, whether it's similar or dissimilar, your operations on these fractions, meaning the way you add, the way you subtract, would be affected by these kinds of fractions. So let's move on now to our next goal, which is performing operations on similar fractions. Okay, so let's do now some of the addition of similar fractions. Let's say I have one half, and I have another one half. If I would like to add one half and one half, physically, we demonstrate that by putting them together because addition means putting things or putting quantities together. So I have one half, which is this bar, and I have another one half, which is the other bar. In order to add these two together, that plus sign is similar to the act of putting them together. So I now have one half, put them together, another one half. That is what we mean by one half plus one half. And that is equal to another bar whose length is the same as one half plus one half. And what's that bar? 
it is this bar that is one hole. And to get that one hole, what you are going to do is just add one plus one together. That gives you two. And then just copy the denominator two. And two divided by two is one. Let's have another example. If I have this fraction, this is 1, 2, 3, 3 over 10, and I have this other fraction, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, which is 6 over 10, mathematically we write that as 3 over 10, and the other one is... 6 over 10. When I put them together, I perform addition. And the result of them together would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 9 over 10. Is there any pattern that you can notice? To get the sum of 3 over 10 and 6 over 10, we put them together and then we count what's the resulting fraction. That's 9 over 10. If you have no access later on to these bars, if you are just given in paper 3 over 10 plus 6 over 10, you cannot imagine that what you are doing is you are putting together these two bars and to get the answer, you are going to add the numbers at the top 3 plus 6 equals 9 but you do not have to add the numbers at the bottom, you just copy the common denominator and so 3 plus 6 is 9 over 10 that is how we perform addition of similar fractions. And this bar provides you with the experience that you can go back later on when you are confused about the rules. Because if you are just looking at the numbers, the tendency is, it's addition. Add the numbers at the top, add the numbers at the bottom. That is wrong. What we are doing is, we are combining these two bars together and that act of combining them is denoted by the symbol plus. And once they are together, that's the answer. And when doing the addition of similar fractions, you just have to count how many bars of this are there. And that's equivalent to adding the numbers at the top and just copying the number at the bottom. So that's the reason behind the rules that your teacher are telling you about how to add similar fractions. So let's pause for a moment and I want you to write in your reflection notebook what you learn about addition of similar fractions. Now at this point, I assume that you have already written your reflection. And our answer to the reflection part is to add similar fractions, we add the numerators and copy the common denominator. Now, the next question is, what if the denominators are not the same? In that case, we are dealing with what we call the similar fractions. What if we say we have one half plus, let's say, one fourth. How are we going to add now 1 half and 1 fourth? So far what we know is we can only add fractions if the denominators are the same. In our example here, the denominators are different. So logically, in order to apply the rule that we already know, our thinking is why not convert these fractions into another fractions so that the denominators are the same. And once we did that one, then we can apply the rule. So, what other fraction has the same length as 1 half, but has a denominator of 4, 
or vice versa, what fraction has a denominator of 2 and has the same length of 1 fourth? The first question is easier to answer. So let's convert this 1 half into another fraction with a denomin denominator of 4. Notice that the length of 1 half is the same as the length of 1 fourth. So in addition of the similar fractions, that is what, ha what is happening. We begin with 1 half plus, let's say, 1 fourth. Upon noticing that 1 half and 1 fourth have different denominators, we look for another fraction whose length is the same as 1 half but has a denominator similar to the other fraction. So instead of 1 half, we use this yellow bar which is 2 over 4. And then we retain the same yellow bar which is 1 fourth. Now 1 fourth and 1 fourth make 2 over 4. So this 2 over 4 is just the same as 1 half. And this 1 half is just and this 1 fourth is just the same as 1 fourth. So instead of 1 half, I, re I look for another fraction whose length is the same as 1 half but has a denominator of 4. And then you have the other 1 fourth. The second part is easier to solve because that's what we know about the first rule we learned about adding similar fractions. So to add these two fractions together, we just have to put them together. And therefore, 1 half plus 1 fourth is equal to 3 over 4. That is precisely what is happening when your teacher is teaching you how to add the similar fractions. Your teacher would tell you now to add the similar fractions, get the least common denominator. And once you get the least common denominator, you divide the 4 by the 2. So get, to get 4 divided by 2 is 2 times 1 is 2. 4 divided by 4 is 1 times 1 is 1. And so you have 2 over 4 plus 1 over 4 and then add 2 plus 1 equals 3, copy the common denominator. Those processes that your teachers are teaching you to add the similar fractions is exactly the same as what's going on physically when we are converting from 1 half to 2 over 4 and then copy the same 1 fourth. The goal is to convert this 1 half into another fraction so that the resulting fractions would be similar. And that extra step that you are performing is necessary so that we can apply just one rule. And the rule is to add fractions, add the numerators, and copy the common denominators. When the fractions are dissimilar, you don't have a different rule. What you only have is another step to convert that dissimilar fractions into similar fractions. And once converted to similar fractions, you apply the same rule. So at this point, let's pause for a moment and as usual, I would like you to enter in your journals, in your reflection notebook, what you learned so far about addition of the similar fractions. So the question is, how do you add the similar fractions? Now, I assume that you already entered your reflection notes. So the answer to our reflection question is, in order to add the similar fractions, first, we are going to convert from the similar fractions to similar fractions. And once the fractions are converted to similar fractions, we perform the same rule for adding similar fractions. That is, add the numerators and copy the common denominators. And we would like to emphasize that there are no two rules for addition of similar and dissimilar fractions. There is only one rule. The only difference is you need one more step to convert from dissimilar fractions to similar fractions and then perform the same rule. Okay, if I am in a real classroom at this point, I would be providing you with series of practices which we call as your actions to to practice your skills and eventually convert whatever learning you have from short-term to long-term learning. 
But since we are not in a real classroom, I would be providing you with a link on some of the exercises that you can do, and then another link where you can check if your answer is correct or wrong. But please perform first the practices before you look at the answer key. So to summarize our lesson now, we talk about fractions. We define what a fraction is. And we said a fraction is a number that represents one or more equal parts of the whole. And we write fraction in the form numerator over the denominator. The numerator tells us how many parts we are taking and the denominator tells us into how many parts the whole is divided into. And then we talk about kinds of fractions, particularly similar and dissimilar fractions. And then we perform basic operations on addition of similar fractions and addition of dissimilar fractions. And if there's one thing that we learned today, you go back to your reflection notebook and review your journals. Okay? See you in our next mini lessons later.